Gary Lyon and welcome to Access All Areas. Some surprising results this round with a couple of costly losses, but Damien Barrett, two top eight teams had huge wins yesterday. They did, Gaz, and we'll start with the, the team high placed of those two teams you refer to, West Coast. They just keep having key players drop, yet they just keep winning by very big margins. They are the premiership favourites in my eyes right now. Well, they're going the best of any of the sides in, uh, in the competition. I don't think there's any doubt about that. They keep losing players. They paid a top four contender. Everyone was excited about the Dogs. They beat them by 77 points. And this man was outstanding, Josh Kennedy. He's going to win the Coleman medal. This structure, guys, the, the kennedy Dowling structure, yep. this is why they are, they are the premiership favourites. Uh, not just that, Dave. I think that's a little bit too simplistic. I mean, Kennedy's been fantastic. Darling is not your typical key position forward. He's more your mobile setup, but they've got a hell of a lot more going for them than just that. But you're, you're right, they're dangerous when they go forward. That man, Hill, Josh Hill, has turned the clock back in the past couple of weeks, but, oh, gee, they were, again, against the side, I repeat, against mm. the side who are in yep. strong contention. Went they, into the game fourth, that side. They did, and they put them to the sword, so yep. they were magnificent. Look, they're hitting the line hard, aren't they? You can yep. make um, cases against both Hawthorne and Fremantle, can't you? With, yep. with recent losses of those two teams, this team, the Eagles, just smashing the line. Yeah, and again, considering the outs, you know, mm. McGovern's been as dominant as any player, as it will arguably as important as any, so... For those who have been a little slow to embrace and maybe I'm one of those, yep. um, no, they're going as well as any side in the comp. Now, we talk about those two big key forwards or the two big men down front for, for the Eagles. It's the Achilles heel for the dog still, isn't it, down back? Oh, it is. I mean, um, Hamling and Talia are willing, um, but look, it, it, you go, are they premiership defenders? Probably not, and that's not having a crack at them. Mm. They'd, they'd be good third tool options, if you, if you like, but against Kennedy, they were exposed badly, seven goals to them, and they're going to come up against increasingly big yep. key forwards. And, uh, and look, the, the Dogs have played against one top eight side in 14 weeks. Yep. So, uh, and, and that's not a criticism, because you can only beat what's been put in front of you. You're all over that in your column in the age on the weekend. I think it was a realisation for people that had been lost, that, yeah. that their record, as good as it was, and going into that game in fourth spot, was mm. not really what it was stacked up well, to and again, that's not a criticism. You can only beat what's in front of you, and they beat them so impressively. But there, there is some shortcomings, and Luke Beveridge would be aware of that. The back half in particular, and the ruck is the other spot. The ruck is the other spot that leaves them really vulnerable. And Dama, D- D- you know my thoughts on ruck, but yep. I've been, um, I am critical of them, and I was critical of, of Nick Natanui over the past couple of years. But I, I was stunned with what they did last yesterday, and, and perhaps they've been doing this for a long, long time, but it was absolutely clinical. And in the end... Uh, Luke Beveridge, I mean, Campbell couldn't compete. No. Uh, they had Biggs going in the ruck, yeah. Bontem Pally, Redpath did OK, tried to jump into him, but, I mean, that was armchair ride stuff. And, I mean, that's another reason why Kennedy gets such good delivery and supply. So, that, and that man, that knew he, a heartache, tragedy, comes back. Dominant. Mm. Fantastic. Yep. The Kangaroos guys are a Ooh. bit like the, the Bulldogs in some sense, haven't they? Just not sure what they'd beaten until uh, yesterday yeah. when they when they really did a good job on Fremantle because they, they were <laughs> behind early. They were 26 points down or thereabouts at one stage and they just ground this one out. Seven wins in a row for the Dogs, but this is the win that needed to come. And I think everyone within the North Melbourne camp were looking forward to this contest to see where they're at. This is the defence we're highlighting here. Mm. Now, again, it highlights... Yeah, the, the really strong performances, 10 marks to Tarrant, 5 intercept, uh, Henderson, Atley's run and dash yep. and all those things off half-back. Frito here in a one-on-one -on -one deep with Fife, that's a great result. It highlights how well they stood up in the last quarter and you know I've been on North Melbourne all year. But it also highlights no Pavlich, hmm. goal kicking remains the issue for Fremantle and, and you know, people sort of say, how can you not rate for Well, everyone rates Fremantle. What we don't, or what I don't rate, is their ability to kick 90 plus, 100 yeah. plus, which, which history says premiership teams need to do. Yeah. And you say, look, he's going to come back in, but is he going to be that difference, guys? He's well, been there all year and, and it's still been the concern yeah. even That's when he has been playing. Structurally, he helps enormously yeah. and he's a talented player. Yeah. Yeah, not talented, he's a superstar yeah. of the game, but he's coming towards the end of, the, of um, his career. They got the job ahead of him, mm. I reckon. Well, two losses in a row now. Ross Lyon, very testy post-match. They're a pretty good team and we come into state and could have had the game iced by three quarter time, but we didn't. So you're confident you can get to that that level come finals time? What's confident? What is that? Well, confidence that you can. What is confidence? I'm trying to think of a synonym. Synonym. Hey? <laughs> um, if you can tell me what confidence is, you can probably help me understand. What's confidence? Well, you've got belief in your players that they can get to that level again. Yeah, I've got belief in my players they can get to that level. Ross lost confidence. 
He's, he's lost the meaning of the word confidence. What do you make? That's your brethren. Oh, look, that's just Ross. I, I don't like it, Gaz, but look, those uh, they are pressure cooker environments. And, and I, look, while you can look at it and say Ross, he didn't handle himself well, and I don't know he did, hmm. I think we're just all in the media. Just, uh, that, respect, that's what happens. What about respect? You're the most senior and respected journalist in the country. What I about going that. into bat for him? Well, I wasn't there. Well, that young man. No, but guess that's what happens. And that's you've, you've got to go armed, and, and Ross can do what he wants, but it doesn't look good for Ross, does it? I mean, he's got bigger problems than uh, worrying about the definition of a journalist's uh, yeah, use of the word confidence. One of those is Nat Fife, uh, who Brownlow medal favourite since almost round one or two. Has he got an issue? We know he's had two incidents already. Anything on the minor scale will have him ineligible for the Brownlow medal, Damien Yeah, Barrett. and just to back over that, if you're not aware, a fine for this, which it may well have been in other weeks, will, will mean he's suspended because of his two prize gas, but I reckon uh, we'll find a way to get rid of this one. What do you mean? No, that's not the question I asked, Damien. Now, let's, yeah, come on, you're being cynical. It, will he get a suspension or a fine for that incident? Does he deserve to? I think we'll find a way to get No, does he deserve to Probably be not. When it's all said and done, probably not. I, yeah. I think he's fortunate that he arms, strangely enough. You're cynically saying, though, that the upstairs won't... Yeah, they don't want him outed for a brown level. Well, they don't. They almost introduced the rule to this, deal with his situation that from would be last the third year. time. Yeah, but they, this rule is almost brought in on the back of what happened to him last year. Yeah, but I mean... And, he, and now he's up at the third yeah, strike yeah, under this new rule. Well, that's right. As a result of... We'll make it four strikes As a result year. last year, they said, let's give him a couple of strikes. So, mm. And therefore, they can be smart enough to realise when they're on the edge. That's the third one, Damien. Do you think, in isolation, would that normally be a fine? I think it would. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. But I reckon we'll find a way to get oh, rid of it. Oh, I can't believe... You're saying they're going to doctor an outcome so That's that my he's... opinion on what will happen today at five o'clock. That's my opinion, Gary. All right, then. And you say they don't do that sometimes. I, I don't know about that, Damien. I don't think they want to lose a Brownlow medal on mm. the back of that. Collingwood, on the other hand, Damo, have lost w uh, nine of their last ten. Is that right? Eight, or eight of nine. their last eight nine. nine. And th yet somehow seem to be escaping any great scrutiny. Well, you don't seem to be Apart from everyone them. except you. Yeah, well, guys, I just want to... All we can do in life is deal with what's the, the track yes, record. Know and our body of work. Uh, Nathan Buckley took over. First year, went into a, finished with a prelim final, which came off a grand final. Yes, Next so, year, yeah. out in the first final. Yeah. Last year, eight and three halfway... So he's rejected his team. Yeah, but there's, there's an, I'm, aware, I'm aware there's a plan in place, but what they dished up against Richmond on the weekend, guys, mm. you need to have more pride in what you present as a footy club, I would have thought. It's all very well to talk about 2017 and even 18 in some people's eyes with this club, but no, what, about, what about round 21 of 2015? I'm with you on that, and the loss on the weekend hurts the, the argument about going forward, but it was a really strange game on the weekend. They had 10 more inside 50s than Richmond for yep. the match. Ten more inside 50s and lost by 92 points. That, to me, points not just to the fact that they're no good or weren't any good. Yep. It points to uh, methodology going from, forward. From the coach? From the coach, from the coaching structure, from the forward line coach, and then from the players in terms of execution. All right, all right so, well, let them off 215. What's their pass mark next year? Uh, finals. OK. Yep, for all me. Right. Hey, uh, we've got more to go, but I just want to allude you to this. This year's series of the wash-up, that's it. The award-winning starts tomorrow. Damo and I are going to review every club, what went wrong, what went right, who's on the chopping block, which player can hold their head up high. We kick it off tomorrow with the Lions, mm -hmm. so keep an eye out for your team on the wash-up. It's exclusive on afl.com.au. Looking forward to that, Damo. Hawthorne, guys, mm. we touched on before, the, the losses are mounting. They've now had six. Yeah. Premiership teams, as a rule, relatively yeah. recently speaking, don't rack up so many losses in a season. Yes. Um, look, there's a couple of things they've got to deal with. Yep. I, I think the two losses in three weeks to Richmond and Port Adelaide have come about with a really similar th theme and thread to it. No question opposition clubs go to work on that. Deny the footy, make them accountable, spread their zone defence, take into parts of the ground they don't want to go to. Alistair Clarkson, best coach in the business, he will then go to work on that. They've got issues. Can every club do that to them? Well, that's the other thing, yep. um, whether they can execute. But you'd reckon you know, if they come up against Richmond and, and the Dogs even. But the other issues are the tragedies surrounding Brett Ratton yeah. and the um, obvious uh, hiccup that puts into yeah. their planning. Yeah. And then the Brendan, Brendan Bolton situation. Mm. If he's appointed this week, as perhaps we suspect, to mm. Carlton, where does that leave the coaching group? So that's something for Clarko to deal with. Frustrating from a Port Adelaide point of view. A footy club who went into this season as one of the genuine premiership favourites are going to miss out after a really insipid middle part of the year. And then we saw that on Friday night. And social media was used just to remind uh, what had been happening with that uh, result there, I guess. Yeah, I like that. Uh, the, you're welcome. <laughs> that means the Eagles essentially stay at home. But I'm a, all about respect, though, in yeah. this competition. And they won some back on Friday night, but they also 
um, raise the questions about the year. Okay. Should there be ramifications for the year? No. Will there be ramifications? No, should there be in your eyes for oh, what's happening? No, 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 because no. Kenny Hinckley's... Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got some grace. Yeah, he's got some yeah. grace and credit. Yep. Hey, Stevie J goes, uh, look, the debate continues. Does he play, doesn't he play? He, we saw everything, didn't we, in, in, the, in the two and a half hours of this game on the weekend. Uh, that's made him what he is. Come on, Chomp. We saw that. Just run fast and kick the goal. Uh, but this is about... And then we saw this. Two minutes later, he <laughs> kicks this one around the corner. Kick four for the night. The thing that he's got going for them that a lot of the others in that debate uh, is his ability to do these things, yeah. and that is be the mercurial forward that can kick goals. And I suspect with Menzel as the heir apparent to Stevie J. Got the umpire nicely there too. He did too. Stood up the umpire. This is uh, critical of this, um, and, and that's fair enough. And that, that's the, the sign of age. And if you spoke to Stevie, he'd say, yeah, I've got one yeah, knee in the side of the head. But I think if yeah. he had his time again, he'd want to stand up in that instance. Should and he that, go on? I think so. I yep. think he will. He mightn't play every single game, but yep. I think his ability to hit the scoreboard yep. is what separates him. Okay. What about the other guy who's debated in the same vein? And we're going to see him this passage of play here. Late in the game, and you can see the score, Stevie J marks it, plays on. Chris Scott was very critical of, of how this final few moments unfolded. Take us through what should have happened here, guys. Well, he shouldn't have handballed a player under pressure like that. Bartel. Um, that's for sure. Jimmy shouldn't have blazed away around the corner left foot And that like should have that. been a 50-metre. That's a 50-metre all, all day long. So that's two super experienced players who just got it so, wrong. So should Stevie just have gone down the line? Yeah. Is that, yeah. yeah, gone back and yeah. waited for, to get numbers there, going down the line, tried to get the ball out of bounds. And Bartel quickly next year. Um, yeah. Looks like he's going to go on, Jimmy. Yeah. And for half of the games that they play against, he'll be a really good player. My concern for Jimmy is leg speed and his ability to play against really quick top eight sides, but that's a decision that they're going to have to make. The big American, Jason Holmes, uh, debut gas for St Kilda and it was exciting at times. This is first bounce, Damo, and a, a raucous cheer went up and, and, the, and the cheering for tapping, even though he didn't get it. But his follow-up work here was great. I reckon he started to blow up from about here. <laughs> <laughs> but that's understandable given his background, but athletically he's athletically predisposed to be a ruckman. Now, yep. And then he's got to learn craft, he's got to develop a tank. Um, but as I said during the weekend, Damo, when, da when Jim Steins wandered into the MCG, and as a 16 year old, I thought it was the biggest joke <laughs> I'd ever seen. Yeah. And he turned out to be the greatest footy story ever. So don't put ceilings on these guys. Yeah. Let them go, give them opportunity, and it's a great thing. Is the difference, though, that he did have the football background? Yeah, it helps. Uh, Gaelic football, albeit. But it helps. Yeah. It helps. Um, Damo, yes. I, I love the footy. I, I love the football players. Mm. You love these folks. This is your department, and there you must have had a tear in your eye when you saw this little Nipsey there just sitting there with his green stuff on. Well, why would I have had a tear in my eye? Well, because look, he looks like you, this bloke. It's a nice part of this game. Look the way he flicks his back backwards. That's good. He's got some talent there. Yeah. Uh, it's a good thing. That, right, that, that uh, sequence of events did more for Wayne Campbell's recruiting of umpires yep. than anything else that's happened. They should sign him up, shouldn't they? Sign him up, making the poster boy. Nice work by you, Warrior. Uh, lots to do this weekend. Don't uh, This week, rather. Don't forget to keep an eye out for the wash-up, which begins tomorrow. Thanks for watching Access All Areas. Goodbye.